Uh -huh. It's, I'm recording. Okay, so what, what I want you guys to think about is how we, how I've tried to orient you to where things are located and use that horizontal template that basically defines internal capsule as this V-shaped structure and related caudate and thalamus to the, to the internal capsule, related lentiform nucleus to the internal capsule. Okay. The, the landmark that we're going to use is the interventricular foramen. And if you notice, right here, here's the for, here are the fornix fibers that are running this direction, and this is corpus callosum. And this is septum pellucidum, which is just a thin membrane. It's primarily glial cells, but there's a little bit of, of neuronal activity in there. But basically, it's that thin membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles. So lateral ventricle behind here, and here's the lateral ventricle opened up, okay? It's easier on this side to see this. What you'll notice is that here's the thalamus right here, and, and from this point down into here is all hypothalamus, okay? And right here, these cut fibers are where the fornix dives Remember I said today that the fornix comes in and then it goes off the midline just a little bit and it separates the hypothalamus between <coughs> medial and lateral, okay? Well, that's the fornix fibers right there diving in to hit the mammillary bodies right there. So this is kind of hypothalamus below here and, di and thalamus above here. And here you can kind of see the front end of the diencephalon, and that's right next to the interventricular foramen. So here, interventricular foramen, and the anterior pole of the thalamus is right here. Okay. So we're going to use that interventricular foramen as a landmark. So the interventricular foramen has in relationship to the anterior pole of the thalamus, and if we go inferior. We see that down here on the temporal lobe, we see this bump at the front part of the parahippocampal gyrus, and that's the uncus. Okay? Can you turn it this way real quick? So here's the uncus. Okay. Okay. So my first line of cut is going to tr be to try to replicate that um, template that we've been using in class, which is the horizontal section. So I'm going to use, use this one. So, interventricular foramen. So I'm going to make take my handy dandy cake cutter right here. <laughs> not just any cake. And not just any cake. And then go through the spleen, through the rostrum of the corpus callosum, but just below the splenium of the corpus callosum, more posteriorly. Okay, so kind of like right there. And what we do then is we see here's that V-shaped structure of fibers that are in indicated on that template. So anterior and posterior. Here's the anterior limb of the internal capsule, posterior limb of the internal capsule, and here's the genu. And if you notice now, the genu comes right to that interventricular layer. So or interventricular frame, right to the layer level of the of the ventricles. Okay? And then the V-shaped structure then limits the head of the caudate nucleus anteriorly, that's this bulge into the lateral wall of the lateral ventricle. And then posteriorly, it limits the thalamus. So there was the thalamus. Here it is in cross section. And then you can't see individual nuclei here, but that's all you can tell is you know, at this point you're not going to label VPL, VPM, dorsal medial, or anything like that. Okay? Lateral to this V is this lens shaped structure, which is the lentiform nucleus, which is composed of putamen. And you can kind of see just a little subtle difference of shape and color right there. And that's globus pallidus. Okay? And you notice that globus pallidus doesn't extend all the way to the front part of the lentiform nucleus, nor does it extend all the way back. Okay? Now, the, the question is always, how do I tell front from back? Well, if you look at this, this large ventricle, and this is the front, and it's very, very close to the midline. Remember, we looked at it where septum pellucidum was separating it from left to right. As we go more caudal, that ventricle goes, starts to push lateral and lateral 
more lateral, and now it's a little bit intermediate within the context. So you can always kind of look at the relationship of the ventricles to midline and say, this has got to be more anterior than this is posterior, okay? The other thing to notice is off this posterior limb of the internal capsule, you see this very white bundle of fibers running caudally. These are the optic radiations, visual radiations, genicular calcarin fibers that are leaving lateral geniculate and coming back to primary visual cortex. And this is really good because if you look at this cortex, see how there's a, a layered look back here? This is all primary visual cortex. It has this very layered look to it. We're up anteriorly, so you don't see that. Even though there's still layers of cells there, caudally it's a, it's a very distinctive look in terms of primary visual cortex. Okay? I would never ask you that. But I just thought it was cool. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is what we want to be able to do now is we now want to be able to go inferiorly, and we're going to make another horizontal cut inferiorly, and what we're going to end up doing is probably cutting through the midbrain. Your orientation in midbrain is more like this in terms of slide 8 and 9, or 7 and 8. We're going to do this. So we're really cutting through midbrain and maybe through more of the anterior part and more of the caudal part back here. And we may get colliculus, we may not. Okay? Okay, so, so what we've done is we've cut like that. Let go blood vessels. Okay. So now, here's the anterior. Here's our midbrain right here. This one's really good. You can see red nucleus right there. See the round structure? There's a red nucleus right there. And then the white matter that surround it is central tegmental tract. But what you see over here is here is cerebral peduncle. And then you see these black, this blackened area right here, a strip of cells, is substantia nigra. So this is pars compacta where the dopaminergic cells are located. Okay? Now the other thing is, is right here medially, is we're on the peripicampal gyrus, okay? If we go here, here we see that there's some structure to, to the inside part of the peripicampal gyrus. This is the, the hippocampal formation. But if we go more rostral, now we get to an area that is, has very little structure to it, which is not quite there. Okay. So remember what we did, what we made it. We were coming down from the interventricular frame and we said right at the bottom here was the uncus. We go just inside the uncus and now we see this area where instead of having structure like this, where you can see sort of layering and, and kind of a C-shaped structure, here, the very front end of the temporal lobe, now it's kind of, it's sort of a heterogeneous look. There's not anything that you can see. That's the amygdaloid complex. Okay? So right inside the uncus is the amygdala. Where here you can see the paracampal gyrus streaming back. Inside that paracampal gyrus lies the amygdaloid or the hippocampal formation right there. Okay? Okay. And there's the brain stem as it fell off. Right. And you can see on this, you can see those transverse pontine fibers streaming laterally.